Welcome to the Decision Strategies How-To Video for the Issue Raising and Decision Hierarchy tool. Decision Strategies consultants have an average of over 20 years experience in their respective industries. As outside facilitators, we excel at teaching teams to frame their decisions, generate clear alternatives for consideration, and rigorously test these alternatives against a world of risks and uncertainties. If you're interested in speaking directly with a Decision Strategies veteran consultant, then contact us today www.decisionstrategies.com. To put this tool in context, let us step back and think about the entire decision-making process. Our goal is to make a confident decision. To do so, we must have alignment on what we are setting out to achieve. We must understand what our options are and consider how each option performs in a world of risks. This allows us to choose a strategy that best achieves our goal while also reducing our exposure to risks. This tool focuses on this step, reaching alignment on the key objectives and clarifying the important decisions that need to be made now. This is where this tool ends, with team and stakeholder alignment as to objectives and key strategic decisions. Why is this important and what are the next steps? Determining the key decisions focuses the team and is a critical first step to the generation of unique strategy options for consideration. This strategy generation is often done as part of a decision strategies facilitated framing session. We also offer a strategy table tool for free download at www.decisionstrategies.com. Once the strategies for consideration have been defined, the team can then test each strategy's performance in regard to the objectives. When the risks are high and outcomes uncertain, Decision strategy strongly recommends a full probabilistic analysis to better understand the ramifications of choosing each strategy. I'll quickly switch screens to give an example. Here I'll quickly show a more complex probabilistic model. You see we have our uncertain variables defined by distribution curves that reflect their range of possible outcomes. Each time the model steps through new iteration, all the variables change to new values in accordance with their distribution ranges. We have a set of calculation pages tied to these variables. And as you can see, the calculations also update on each iteration. We run the model thousands of times with the computer recording each result. We do this for each strategy and can then see how each performs across the range of uncertain outcomes. In this example, you can see that some strategies may be very good some of the time, but also carry a high probability of losing great amounts of money under unfavorable conditions. Let's return back now to our more basic tool. Let's return now to the issue raising and decision hierarchy tool that will aid in objective alignment and identification of strategic decisions. Let's start the how to. I have the full Decision Strategies toolbox installed on my computer, so I can open the application by clicking on the Decision Strategies icon. If your IT policy does not allow the download of applications, then you will have to download each tool template file individually, find the files on your machine, and then open them directly. To open a new tool, I'll click the Launch New Template icon. I select Issue Raising and Decision Hierarchy tool and will be prompted to save our file as an Excel macro enabled workbook. I'll save this as demo.xlsm and I'll save it to my desktop so it's easy to find later. To summarize the introduction, Decision Strategies has many decades of experience leading facilitated framing sessions. This tool focuses on a specific portion of the framing session, the clarification of objectives and the identification of the key decisions integral to the definition of a strategy. 
Note we don't actually define strategies with this tool. That is done with the strategy table tool, also found on the decision strategies website. Rather, in this tool, we determine the decisions that will need to be made as part of any strategy. Let's scroll down to the next button and continue on to the objectives page. We'll scroll down to the section for step one, where we'll start by listing all the company's objectives that pertain to the particular project or initiative. When facilitating group sessions, we often have each member first write their objectives on a piece of paper. We then go around the room and have each person say an objective from their list that has yet to have been called out. We continue around until all the objectives have been stated. For our example, let's say that we heard the following objectives. Stockholder return, IRR, someone may have said we want to be an employer of choice for the region. You may have also heard our goal is to boost sales by 10%, no safety incidents, NPV, shareholder value, safe operations, to have a highly trained sales team, and that we're pursuing low price catalyst options. You'll notice that many of the objectives fall into similar categories, or affinity groups as we call them. Our next step is to try to create these affinity groups to make our objectives list more manageable. We scroll up here, section two, for our example, let's say the groupings that summarize the objectives below were shareholder value, improved margin, employee retention, higher sales, efficient operations, financial metrics such as MPV, IRR, etc., and so on. With our affinity groups created, we can then proceed down our objectives list and categorize each item. To do that, we come to step three, and for our objective of stockholder return, we'll say that falls under shareholder value. IRR, that might be a financial metric. An employer of choice may be employee retention. To speed things up, I will cheat and copy and paste. And here we say our goal of boosting sales by 10% can be categorized as higher sales. No safety incidents might fall under the safety heading. NPV is again a financial metric. Then we have another shareholder value. Safe operations is safety, higher sales, low material cost. And so on down the list. Now that we have our objectives identified and categorized, we can scroll down to the next button, which will take us to the objectives hierarchy page. Our goal of the objectives hierarchy is as a group to talk our way through the relative importance of our objectives, as well as how these objectives interrelate. Our primary objectives form the topmost tier of our hierarchy and are often at the very core of the company's existence. The fundamental tier typically reflects the main objectives which an individual project or initiative aims to achieve directly, and the means tier then includes the smaller objectives that contribute to the achievement of the objectives in the higher levels. Let's walk through our example to give a better feel. I'll start by clicking the Import Objectives button to copy over our affinity groups from the previous step. I'll spread them out so we can see. If we were facilitating a group session, at this point we would have a conversation about which objectives belong in each category and how they support objectives placed in higher levels. Looking at our objectives, Let's say that shareholder value belongs at the top as a primary objective. This is a rather broad goal, and we can say that it is achieved through better financial performance, which we'll place in the fundamental tier.
As far as the thrust of this example project is concerned, let's also say that higher sales and improved margin are also fundamental objectives. We'll still place them lower than financial metrics, though, to show the supporting relationship. Now we'll say that these remaining objectives belong in the means category as they contribute to the objectives above and aren't the prime goals of the project in our example. Note that some of these objectives may conflict. We could improve our margin through raising our price, but that may lower our sales. Coming to an understanding around the trade-offs between competing objectives is one of the main reasons we complete the hierarchy as a group before beginning any analysis. Later, using other tools and methods, we will need to generate potential strategies and test them against these objectives. When we do so, we'll look for solutions that both improve margin and lead to higher sales. And if faced with strategies that do one or the other better, we'll know that our preferred strategy is the one that best speaks to overall financial performance. Now before I continue, you'll notice that I moved one objective off to the side, safety. For our example, we'll say we work for a great company that does not sacrifice safety for any other objectives. We'll put safety up in the top right corner of the primary objectives region as a given. Whatever strategy is chosen, it will be in accordance with high safety standards. We've just accomplished one key milestone of a framing session, gaining clarity around our objectives. With this complete, let's click the next button and move on to the issues raising sheet. The issues raising portion of the tool starts a new section of the framing session. Now that the objectives are clear, we'll completely switch gears and begin to gain clarity around our issues. We won't discuss the objectives again in this tool, but they're key to remember in the later stages of alternative generation and testing. We now come to the issue raising segment of a framing session. When facilitating for a group, we again have each member write down their thoughts on a piece of paper, this time any and all issues that relate to the project. We then go around the room and have each person say one issue that is yet to have been said. For our example, let's say that the issues recorded were that we want to maximize our return on investment, Do we invest in South America? What will the price of electricity be? And so on. With the issues recorded, we then proceed to classify each as either a decision, an uncertainty, a fact, or perhaps another objective. This step can be tedious when working with a group, but is quite important for uncovering key decisions. Often there is insight when individuals realize they cannot choose to achieve an objective. They must choose to make decisions, and depending on the outcomes of the uncertainties, these decisions may or may not result in objective achievement. Let's quickly classify our example issues. Our first issue, maximize return on investment, is actually another objective. Our next issue, do we invest in South America, is a decision under our control. What will the price of electricity be? We don't know the future price of electricity, nor can we choose the price of electricity. It is an uncertainty. It is very important to get the permit submitted early, is a statement of fact. For the sake of time, I'll paste in the rest of the example classifications. We'll now hit the next button to bring us to the decision page. Here we click the move decisions button and we'll see all of the issues that were determined to be decisions in the last step moved over to the current sheet. We are now going to classify these decisions further as either given, strategic, or tactical. Given decisions are those decisions that have already been made at a higher level. They are considered out of scope for the current analysis. 
tactical decisions are those which may be important, but perhaps they aren't important to defining a strategy. Either they can be made later, or they can't be made until strategy is defined, or will always be made in the same way depending on the chosen strategy. The strategic decisions are those which the team must make now in order to fully define a strategy. They are the key decisions at the heart of the team's focus. Let's categorize the decisions in our example. Our first decision, do we invest in South America, is a strategic decision. How large should we build the plant? Strategic. What quantity of handheld radios should we purchase? Is tactical. What type of steel is needed for the structural supports of building B? It may be important, but it's not important for defining the strategy. Tactical. What will be our mode of transportation of finished goods? Strategic. What new market should we enter? Strategic. We will remain in the European market. That sounds like a given. What feedstock material should we design the plant around? Strategic. Should we design the plant to use naphtha? Strategic. Who will fill the administrative assistant role? Tactical. Should we license our technology? Strategic. Here again is often a point of insight. The team begins to see that many of the issues they had previously been consumed by are actually tactical. Not that they are not important, but they can be made later or will be made dependent upon other decisions that must be made first. The team begins to gain clarity around the few key strategic decisions they must face. Let's continue on with the tool and we'll focus on these strategic decisions again in a few more steps. I'll click the next button to open the decision hierarchy page. This step is to provide a visual summary of the previous work. I'll click the Build Visual button to create a decision hierarchy. This graphical representation can then be copied and pasted into presentations and reports. We'll hit the Next button and continue to the Strategic Decisions sheet. Here on the strategic decision sheet, we hit the move strategic button to carry over the decisions we had previously marked as strategic. Many of these decisions listed might actually be repeated themes with slightly different wording. Let's create some higher level affinity groups to categorize our decisions. For example, we'll say our affinity groups are plant size, target markets, transportation method, license technology, and feedstock options. With our affinity groups listed, we now come down to categorize each strategic decision. Our first strategic decision, do we invest in South America, can be categorized as a target market question. How large should we build the plant, falls under plant size. What will be our mode of transportation of finished goods, Transportation method. What new market should we enter is again a question of target markets. Which feedstock materials should we design the plant around? Feedstock options. And similarly, should we design the plant to use naphtha as a feedstock option? Should we license our technology? Question of license technology. And finally, I'll hit the sort button, and we can now see that we focused all of our issues down to these strategic decisions, plant size, target market, transportation method, whether or not we license our technology, and what are our feedstock options. The tool ends here with clarity around what our objectives are and which decisions require our focus. The next step is to generate unique strategies that explore the different combinations of ways each decision can be made. Then, with alternative strategies defined, we can begin to test the performance of each against the uncertain conditions that they will face. To learn more about how Decision Strategies generates and tests alternatives, please check out our other tools available for free download or contact us today to speak directly with a veteran consultant. 
www.decisionstrategies.com.